This example is about scheduling. Scheduling orchestrations. And that's an incredibly powerful thing because you can create dependencies and many more things. For this example, I'm first creating an orchestration that retrieves the batches in error. When I have the batches in error, I'm creating a notification that uses the orchestration get batches in error. That notification sends a notification to the user. Then I'm creating an orchestration to run the post batch and then uh, send the notification with the uh, batches in error. When, that's, when all that is done, um, we're creating a schedule to run uh, the post batches every 10 minutes during office hours. So let's go. So first, create an orchestration. So click New, uh, create the orchestration. And this is the orchestration to get the batches uh, which are unposted. I've created a bit more flexible that you can also put the batch type. And this whole example is about inventory. So I'm using N batches. But to make this thing more flexible, I'm creating an input parameter for uh, the batch type. So put in the batch type, save it. So then click design mode um, and create a data request. We are going to create a new data request. Going to start with uh, DR and then we get batches. So where do I get those? Uh, I can't save. First, I have to put in a table or view. So I'm starting the P0011 and get the view from here. It's always safe to get a view from an application um, if you don't know what exact data you need to have. So the view here is V0011B. This is what we are going to use in the data request. So let's click load to load all the de details from the data request. Um, going to filter on type and on uh, Let's see what else do we need. Um, oh, yeah, bad status. Let's beautify the variables again because this is almost unreadable i have to think myself as well like what what is the batch status field um, it is bs and in this case i want to know the count and i'm only going to report the count of the batches So this is it. Yeah, we of course we have to map uh, the fields. So embed status is uh, error. And we're done. Oh yeah, of course. Let's give it a nice variable name.
We'll call it batches and error. Let's see what we get here. Let's try it out. We got 25. Okay, that makes sense. At least for uh, the bike factory, the Demo Junior data. So now let's create the next thing. We first need a rule actually for the notification because we need to determine if we get batches and error. So let's create a rule not zero. So we need to put in a number, which is of course numeric, and it needs to be not equal to oh not one to zero. Save. And now create the notification. So let's create a notification um, to get the batches in error. And we do it depending on an organization. We could have done this on a watch list as well. Um, there's of course many ways that you can do things. Organization input is N. Uh, and then run the rule and uh, say uh, that is an error is uh, not zero. Send out a message. Um, say that is an error on the notification. And the body says that is posted, but uh, there's still something in error. So you can use these variable fields in your message body. Um, let's also quickly create an application link, P011. And that's it. So the next thing, if we want to test it, let's uh, create a subscriber. Subscribe to that notification. My subscriptions. Add a subscription. Yes, there it is. This has so much more functionality than I'm currently showing in this example. Um, this is just a, a, a quick demo of how you could use um, schedules. So yes, here is our notification. Came up, and if you click it, you go to uh, unposted batches. So next, create the real orchestration. And call it orchestration um, post batches. Save it. Oh, inventory batches, yes, make more sense. So go in design mode, add our UBE. So add a report, that's what it's called. Report post batches. At the 09801, and we're using the, the inventory version. It's already a data selection on it, so we don't have to override anything. Um, let's save it. Oh, one more thing we don't want to fire and forget. Um, we want to run it and then run the notification. So that's the UBE. Now add our notification, which is a beautiful feature because previously you had to add connectors, but nowadays you can just add a notification in your existing orchestration. And that's done. Well, next step, of course, is 
to do the big thing is to schedule it. So click schedule in your orchestration. We are going to create a new schedule. Um, we give that a nice name called schedule. Um, yeah, we set every 10 minutes during office hours. Um, and you can do it two ways, or you can say run every five minutes, hours, but this is a bit limited. So you can also create a string, go to Chrome Formatter uh, online, and that gives you, allows you to do a lot of fancy things, almost unlimited scheduling. So we say office hours, um, that's from 8 to 1800 and um, during weekdays. That generates a long string, which you just copy and paste afterwards. Um, paste that in, in your schedule, and then your schedule is set up. As you see, there's now a schedule icon there on top of my start. So now we can go back home and click scheduler. And on the upper right corner, you can see the scheduler is running. You say it to start, auto start, and that's it. Now it's gonna kick off every 10 minutes during office hours. And as you see here, we already see um, it started itself and it will do it every 10 minutes. So I probably quickly have to stop it. So that is the thing. Um, this is how easy it is to schedule an orchestration. And this brings many, many uh, opportunities because you can create dependencies, notifications, and also dependencies on UBEs, which you could never do with the existing schedule. So here are the scheduling example. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.